Okay. Thanks for coming, uh, everyone. Um, so yeah, welcome to our community, uh, Eden Aerosmith School Online. It's been a, a really cool process getting this whole thing started. I know for years we had always been asked by parents and families and alumni and anyone like where why can't I just do this online it makes so much sense that I could just access the activities from wherever I am and we always knew it was a good idea and, and we we shared that like yeah you're right this is a good thing to be online so um you know with the the pandemic um came an opportunity and you know the world's changed quite a bit and I think everyone has a good and new uh, idea of what it means to to do programs online um, you know, it's, this is a different program. There's lots of different programs out there for, for lots of different needs. You can see the doctor on, on the computer. You can uh, do yoga with an instructor, right? And we're all just getting used to that world. Uh, so this opened up Aerosmith to, to that opportunity. I just wanna start with a little video here. As a parent, there is nothing harder than watching your child struggle, struggle to learn, struggle to get along at home, struggle to make meaningful connections. For parents of one in 10 children globally dealing with learning disabilities, these are very real challenges that they do their best to help their children face every single day. For years, it was believed that learning difficulties were permanent and that the brain could never change. Parents desperate to help their children could only work around the problem using tools such as voice recognition programs tutors, counselors, things that support, but don't address the underlying cause of learning challenges like dyslexia, dysgraphia, attention difficulties, and a range of other difficulties. Over 20 studies into Aerosmith program have shown that learning difficulties need not be permanent. Aerosmith has pioneered the application of neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to change throughout life to allow learning difficulties to be overcome. Our program doesn't simply help the students manage their learning difficulty. It's proven to increase their capacity to learn. Aerosmith's cognitive exercises help rewire the brain so neural pathways crucial to learning become activated. And once rewired, those changes permeate all aspects of life and learning. The world suddenly takes on a new dimension as students begin to engage more deeply in their studies, are better able to have highly complex thoughts and increase the depth of communications with peers and family members. Learning is not just about being better in school. It's about setting our children up for a better life. We've seen that learning disabilities and the stigmas that go along with them do not have to be permanent. Becoming better able to learn enhances every part of our children's lives. Create a new reality. Transform your future. All right, so that's great. Let's give it some context now. What, is, what does all this mean? How is this program, um, you know, useful? As a parent, yeah, there is nothing uh, harder. So this is Barbara. Um, a lot of people have um, heard of her, read her book, especially in our community when we do get um, contacted. A lot of people have, you know, done some research on her. Um, essentially, she was raised uh, with a, or grew up with a learning disability um, and never really understood what that meant. Um, for her, she was told she had a mental block and that meant that there was a physical block that was stuck in her, in her head that was preventing her from being able to learn. And, you know, as many People know growing up with a learning disability this had a severe impact on her life, her quality of life, uh, how well she was able to do, how she was able to make friends and, and forge relationships. Um, so when she, she started getting a bit older, uh, she wanted to research and, and figure out why this was happening, what was actually happening in the brain. And uh, there was a couple um, scientists that, that she st started to study. Um, one was Dr. Rosenschweig, who is in um, Cal, California, uh, Cal Berkeley, and he was studying neuroplasticity for the first time. And he was doing this by looking at the, the brains of rats and mice in enriched environments versus um, really dim and, and dreary environments. And what they were starting to see was the rats that all had all the friends, that had food, that had you know, brightness and toys, 
uh, the brains are actually denser and stronger than the ones that were, you know, isolated or limited food, uh, limited interaction. Um, so what this meant was that the brain had an effect on the environment that it was in. Uh, she also did research on um, uh, brain injury survivors in World War II um, and throughout Europe and noticed that uh, the, the brain had an ability to, to change quite a bit. So there was a story where a man survived a, a wound to the, a shrapnel wound to the head and he could no longer do a lot of things that, that she could do. So before he was fine for the most part, uh, but after he could no longer tell time, um, he had diff difficulty with cause and effect. And she knew that the same area that maybe he got hit through was impacting her because it was, it was the same functionality. So putting those together, um, she started to look in, you know, what is neuroplasticity? And essentially it's neuro neurons that fire together, wire together and started creating uh, a program for herself to see if it would improve. So she made flashcards of little clocks, started reading them because it was something she never knew how to do. Uh, read them, got faster and faster and faster. And eventually uh, noticed that that was translating into her life. So the area that she was targeting or that her brain was focusing on had a bigger impact than she thought. And she noticed an increased quality of life. And that kind of started her, her life's work starting the Aerosmith program. And there are some conditions for neuroplastic change. So uh, one example, active and sustained uh, engagement. So being engaged in something, doing a task helps to strengthen the connection. Uh, we all know this with the, the riding a bike. At first it's tough, then it gets easier and easier. And then it's like riding a bike, right? Like it's, it's, it's something you don't really forget because that network's been, been put down. Um, it's gotta be uh, novel and complex. So something new, uh, and something difficult that's gonna keep the brain stimulated. And it needs effortful processing. So that energy and uh, time that you would wanna put in to make that change happen. And essentially what we're going for, for a brain that's working well is just um, you know, to have a balanced brain. You want all the regions to do the job that they're meant to do, that they were, you were born to have them do, right? And in that case, they're not uh, helping out. You're not uh, comp compensating by having one area or one strength to a job that another should do. So what you really want to get into is a balanced brain where everything's doing the job that it's meant to do. Um, and that's where you're going to see the best functioning. So historically, when we're looking at, uh, you know, what the outlook of the brain was for a long time, and this was when Barbara was younger and, you know, even for myself being diagnosed with AD, ADD in high school, like I know that this was kind of the attitude that a lot of the teachers had um, in the 90s and, and backwards and even to today, that the brain is, is unchangeable. Once you're, you know, you're born the way you are, there's nothing you can really do to change those cards. Uh, you better just accept it, you know, move on with it, get the help you need where you need to, to make life easier uh, or crutches to help, you know, make it, it easier to, to function. And it, the brain is hardwired, it is what it is, and it can't be altered if damaged or limited. Uh, and for learning disabilities, you know, they're lifelong and permanent, limited academic achievement and career path, um, accommodations and modifications, you know, and that's, that's normally what they, they would go towards is, okay, let's find a career that's suitable for someone like you, right? When really the brain can continue to change based on the environment and that's what neuroplasticity was was uh, discovered as. And in special education, uh, accommodations are really the way to go. I, I know that um, over the, the winter in, in 2020, the start of like, well, a year ago now, I was even um, getting an upgrade in my special education uh, with Queen's University and noticing a lot of the accommodation language is still there. You know, using tools and technology to reduce the impact of learning disability and teach a learner rules or strategies to approach the material. And essentially you're, you're teaching how to work around things that you're not able to do. Um, but what we've learned is they can improve. Um, you know, you don't need the modifications. You don't need things to be made easier. However, like learning disability doesn't end when you graduate. Um, as adults, it actually gets worse. Uh, depression, anxiety, um, there's a lot of terrible things that can go through um, the, the head of, of people with learning disability. And you know, the older you get, the harder it gets. 
which becomes even more, more difficult as, as time goes on. Okay, so why now and why online? Like wh these things are, you know, the Aerosmith program has been around for, for a number of years now. Um, why, why try to do this online? And what we're noticing is a really good effect uh, for any type of learner. And I'm not sharing this chart to really go through every little detail here. Um, you know, if you have trouble in reading, spelling, vocab, writing, math, science, speech, or anything social, everyone can find something there that they can improve in, right? This can be used for enhancement. This can be used for areas where, you know, you need to improve for career asp uh, aspirations. Um, there's lots of different activities that can target brain regions that do a lot of tasks for us and make it easier. If we're thinking about that uh, balanced brain and going back to that level, you really want all the areas to work together and that's gonna provide the best outcomes and um, you know, the happiest person because their the brain's in a better state of mind. So really anyone can benefit from this. And I'll get into a little, uh, little bit of a journey of how I got into this work. Um, so I had a master's in education and that led me to wonder more about uh, how we level the playing field for students with disabilities. I was in grade 10 um, when I was diagnosed with ADD and I, what I, the shift that I really noticed was teachers were trying to help you and in, help ensure that you were getting the grades that you needed. If you were putting the energy in, uh, if you were, um, you know, willing to put in the, the time after school. And that was before the diagnosis. What I saw after the diagnosis was, it's no longer my fault as a teacher if you're not doing well. So I'm gonna give you some accommodations. You can go into that other room for a little while if you want. You can take some extra time on the tests. Um, but if you're, if you're getting a 65% on a test, you should be proud of that, right? That should be something you should um, you shouldn't hang your, your head down for, you should be happy that you got that when really the capability is, you know, and where the student should be, if, if you're able to get a 65, you can get a 95, right? And that's, that was my experience for where a lot of uh, how conventional approaches um, worked. So when I, I came into Vancouver and started working with Eaton Aerosmith School, I was, I was there for three years as a teacher learning with a, a variety of children, um, very severe learning disability, very severe uh, social issues. Um, you know, one of my most memorable kids, he would sit in the corner and just read. And, you know, by the end of the program, the, really I'm a proofs in the pudding, I wanna see it. So I'm like, okay, like, well, they're doing these activities. I've learned how to, how to teach them. Um, you know, how are these things gonna work? Like, this is a great job. The, the staff's awesome. The kids are fun to, to you know, hang out with and play with. But when I started to see that transfer, when I started to see the kid from the corner reading a book, engaging in something after never engaging, and then that making life easier, and then going back to school and becoming valedictorian before going to high school, like those are the things you really want to see. Um, those are the bright moments where it's like, this works. If you can target brain areas that aren't functioning properly with neuroplastic intervention, it's going to translate in a lot of different positive ways. So from that point, um, I wanted to know more. I was very interested in the research side of it. A lot of the, uh, the kids that were in um, my class at the time were in research. We were blind to who was uh, in the program or in the research side. Um, but I was asked by Mark Watson, who's with me in this picture, um, you know, would you be interested in, in looking into traumatic brain injury? Uh, so we started a study uh, looking at a group of adults with, um, different types of brain injuries, traumatic brain injuries from car accidents, um, you know, sports accidents, falls, a variety of, of different types of injuries and put them through these activities. And that's where we saw what the biggest translation for learning disability was, I saw a lot of my students with learning disabilities in these adults with, with, brain, with brain injury essentially their brain was fine, then was injured, and they were displaying brain or learning disability type behavior. So what did that mean? That means 
a region of your brain can do a task. If it's not able to do that task, it's going to show itself in different ways. And what we were seeing was a very, a very big um, comparison to between learning disability and brain injury. So we did the study. The study was great. I'll share some of the results. Um, and you know, we we added in exercise, meditation, and um, clinical counseling. And uh, this eventually, I, I came back to to work with Sarah here, and we we were getting this off the ground uh, to start working with kids with learning disability after I moved back east. So I'm in Ontario. The school is out in Vancouver, and uh, it's it's fun to be able to work together like we're like we're in the same place, but now we're serving people all over the world uh, in a, a new environment where you, you know you can engage from anywhere. And one thing that we're really noticing, and this is a, a good analogy, Vancouver, this is a, just a picture of Vancouver with the maps and systems, the brain's kind of mapped out like this. And what we're seeing uh, on the left side of the screen is uh, EEG. So the brain is mapped together. There's different connections in all the, all the regions just like a city, right? You have people um, that need to get to work every day. They're going across bridges. They're going into the busy city, right? So let's say this is, this is the brain of someone who is, uh, you know, fine. Everything's working as it should. There's busier times in the day. There's more stressful times in the day, but essentially you're able to go through your motions as you are, right? But what happens if one of these bridges goes down, right? You have just as many people that need to get into the city but now you're stressed, you're late, your boss is yelling at you, uh, you're gonna try to find a new route the next day that's not working, you're gonna try to find another one the next day. And that's kind of what you're seeing with learning disability too. You're seeing a bridge that's not quite complete or even an opportunity. What if we had another bridge here? What if we had another bridge here? How much more efficient would things be working? Right, what you see in, in brain injury would be um, people who are no longer able to do some of the tasks they had and what you see in, um, or what you see in brain injury and what you see in learning disability is potential that's unlived, un unlived or untreated yet. So what if it could function better? What if you could do things that you didn't think you could? What we saw within, within that was fluid intelligence, which is defined as the ability to solve new problems, use logic and new situations and identify patterns. Um, that increased. So being able to take new information, make sense of it in real time increased. What we saw with crystallized intelligence, which is the ability to use learned knowledge and experience, like that's the door. If I want to leave the room, I'm going to go through that door. We even saw increases in that because you could start to see more. And this is just over a few months. So out of all these things and all this function, there's a lot of research and I can get into some a little bit later. Um, and we wanted to make a program that was available for anyone. So this is kind of where we, we've set up our, our platform. Um, so far for the ESO program options, the four hour a week program, which is kind of like our part-time program is really having um, the most interest because it can be done around anyone's schedule. You're no longer needed to be pulled out of a, another school or program, university. Um, you can access it from anywhere at any time, just for the four hours a week. Uh, so students are able to engage in one cognitive activity four days per week for an hour a day. And it includes a cognitive assessment, which determines program direction. And we're currently serving over 100 now, um, four hour a week students who take part in 11 different online classes. And I think we've increased that up to 13 um, from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Next year, we're actually gonna be offering classes from 7 a.m. Pacific all the way up to 7 p.m. So there's gonna be a lot more opportunity to take different classes. Some people you know, are, are signing up for one at the start of the day and one towards the end of the day as well, uh, just to be able to fit in, you know, not miss out on this before, the fear might have been to not leave uh, their school, and now you can you can get both the best of both worlds. So another option for the summer um, is a cognitive intensive program. We actually have this running at all times of the year, uh, but it's most po most popular in the summer. And uh, you know, a full year's worth of Simba relations, which I'll, I'll talk about in a, a couple minutes, uh, just over the summer months. 
so it's improving quality of life in a shorter period of time. Uh, I've noticed the most effect uh, in this class out of all of them so far, just because we're still halfway through the, the school year um, in our first year. And during the summer, we saw amazing effect and a lot of students wanting to return for classes in the fall, uh, just because it, it was something that they were noticing have a big difference in their life. And then the other option is our half day program. Um, so a, again, a cognitive assessment determines the program direction and students engage in up to four separate cognitive exercises. And it follows the school year calendar and it resembles more of a brick and mortar that we would have. Um, so this, this is a, a very popular option uh, for people who are looking to address typically more than two brain regions or within the assessment that they would do two areas that, uh, that they would like to improve on uh, for four hours a day. And, and even again, this, this can be done with other programs going on at the same time. Most of our students of all ages uh, are, are involved in many different things throughout the day uh, rather than needing to just travel to one place. Uh, so we do have a couple of um, students here and I wanted to give them a chance to, to share their experience. Um, we have Avonlea and Elaine. Um, so I would love for you guys to kind of share your experience and how, how things are going for you uh, in this environment. Who do you want to start? Elaine, you, you're talking, you might as well go first. If you like. okay. All right. Well, I'm the adult in this um, program, the adult student. And I wrote out a few things after school today. And I broke it down into three different parts. First about the Aerosmith program, then about the Eaton Aerosmith School, and then specifically about the online presentation. I think I'll start with online first. What um, the two things of the four that I wrote that I starred are that I really appreciate being able to access the program living hundreds of miles away from a, a city that has an Aerosmith school. I wasn't willing to make the move and now I don't have to. And so that's really something that I'm so grateful for. The other thing I particularly like is that because I get to do it at home, I get to control if there are many or few distractions. And since I'm so easily distracted, that's a really big benefit to me. It's quiet here and it allows me to uh, focus my efforts and be able to concentrate on my work. I don't want to miss any opportunity to improve my brain's functioning. I also don't want to squander my tuition fees by being distracted and, and wasting a lot of time. What else did I write here? Oh, I like that there's a small PTR, pupil teacher ratio. And so that allows lots of um, access to teacher help and monitoring and work evaluation. And I really like the flexibility, as Josh mentioned, about uh, the opportunity to schedule my schooling around my other activities. Um, as far as Eaton Aerosmith School itself, I like that uh, you can choose a program that fits with your time available and your budget, which is um, quite a consideration too like that the teachers are well-trained and experienced and they're caring and encouraging and they genuinely seem to care about making my classmates and I reach as much potential as we're capable of. I think that's about all I have to say, but I am happy to answer questions. Great, thanks, Elaine. You're welcome. Evan Lee and Amy, I'd love to hear from you guys. Okay, go ahead. Um, so when I was thinking about what I wanted to say, I, I thought I would share more of a personal story. So mm, I was born with NLD, which makes it really hard for me to 
like read people and it also gives me a hard time in math, but I've noticed Aerosmith has really helped me with those areas that are really difficult because like I used to feel really isolated and cut off from other people before I went there, but now I feel like I can really connect with others and I enjoy meeting new people and making new friends. And so it, it's really been a big game changer in that way. And also um, I've noticed some changes in math as well because like I can understand um, what they're talking about and I'm, I'm not just like confused and lost. And like, it, it's just been such a positive experience because the environment at Aerosmith is really positive and like the teachers are there to support you and help you even when it gets hard and you're really frustrated with the exercises. Like they, they lift you up and they help support you even when you're like having a hard time doing things like they, they just, they really, help you out a lot and your classmates are also there as well and they make things fun because you get to like meet other people who also have learning disabilities and that's pretty much all i wanted to add great thank you amy would you like to add anything um i don't know who's listening but um i was thinking about as a parent um Avonlea mentioned that she has a nonverbal learning disorder and it's a, it accompanies uh, a syndrome she was born with. It's called Turner syndrome. And so she's had many difficulties over the years. And I pulled her out of school in third grade and I, um, I was homeschooling her until, well, I guess she's still homeschooled, but um, she does a lot of online stuff now. But I struggled for so long for years and years and years trying to find something that would help not just accommodate the issues that she has um, with a lot of her academic learning and her social interactions and things like that. I was trying to find something like Aerosmith for many years before I actually, like before we found it. And um, she's only been doing it since last August, I think, was it August? August she started and so that's only been six months but I have noticed a ginormous dramatic change in her confidence. Um, she, uh, there's just so many things. She laughs at jokes now and can get the jokes. <laughs> um, she's so much more confident in herself. Um, when she's speaking to other people, she is so much less anxious. Um, her math has improved her um just her overall ability to reason and to connect things um there's an experience i had just uh just a couple years ago um i was picking her up after a, a school thing that she was participating in and her brother yelled out the window avonlea and she immediately ran across the road and that was really frightening for me because I thought, ah, oh, she like she's she was 14 at the time. And um, that that really scared me to the point where I'm like, how am I going to prepare her for college if she she's doing things like that? And I feel like Aerosmith has really come in. And I mean, we've only really just started this journey, but she's so different and she she just is connecting like it is just like that the picture you showed earlier josh of all of those connections yeah. i can see it i can see it at almost every day she comes um out after she's been she's in the half day program and so when she's done i ask her about what's going on and she's always um saying things and she's she comes up to me other times and says things that she's noticing about um the world around her that she just never connected before or it's very hard to to say it in in one little sort of space of time really nice. how different things are for her and how encouraging that is and how great like we're just looking forward to seeing how much she's going to progress and what's going to be different in two years so i'm i'm just so happy that we found eat Smith because so often like 
the throughout our whole time um it's that whole thing where people just give accommodations and they they just say oh you've got to learn to live with this and I'm just so glad it's like no you don't you can really improve things and it might not make it completely disappear but it's going to make it a whole lot stronger and a whole lot better so I'm I'm just really as a parent I it's it has been priceless for me like I I think the cost of it is you can't even put a price on what she's getting out of it yeah. I'm happy to answer questions too yeah. but I don't I don't know the format <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing. Like it's it's always nice to hear is it really as a parent, you know, you want the best for your kids. You want to see their potential be fulfilled. Um, as a parent myself, that's that's the number one priority, right? Is is to have a happy kid who is is able to do what they want to do and, and be able to try things they they didn't think they could do and then see themselves, you know, improve. And that's that's the most important part of parenting in my perspective. So hearing the way that you explain that and, and the hope and positivity you're getting from this, you know, it never gets old to hear those kinds of stories and it's always fun um, to see what's possible. And, you know, thank you so much for sharing. And like one of the, the linking things is, is just being able to do this program for where both of you are, Elaine and Avonlea, like you guys, this probably wouldn't be something that you could have just jumped into had it not been available online. So the, the ability to impact more lives just from being able to work with people from all over is, is something that we've always wanted. And I know Sarah and I had that in common when we got started was how, you know, this is gonna be great. We're gonna be able to work with people from, from all over and, and help more people that haven't, didn't have the option to do this. And a lot of people have a ton of anxiety for something like and you know that almost is too much to to even commit it in going into a, a physical place and being you know with other people that could be judging them and being in an environment where maybe the lights aren't proper or aren't right right whereas now you're able to manipulate your own environment like like elaine was saying you're able to set things up for your own success and know what that environment looks like while still getting the most out of a program that's geared towards the brain areas that you're trying to improve on. So that kind of brings us to, you know, what this, this kind of looks like, that what the cycle looks like is it's targeted cognitive programs. They use differential stimulating and effortful processing, which leads to structural and functional changes in the brain, which contributes to increased cognitive capacity and ability to learn which leads to increased social and emotional well-being, right? Social and emotional well-being is something sometimes we take for granted when things are going well. When they're not going well, you notice that your quality of life isn't quite what you'd hoped or, or what it could be. So looking at a clock, this is an example of, of you know, something that some of the kids and, and adults are, are working on. Uh, so the lessons from a clock. Like, what do you really see when you look at a clock? Really, when you're a kid, and I know with my son, who's only able to read a um, digital clock, and the only reason we've taught him at his age to read a digital clock is so he doesn't wake us up too early, but it has to be 700 to wake up, right? So for him looking at this clock, which is normally earlier, like I didn't wake up at 700, that's beside the point. With this kind of clock, you know, he, he would just see a circle with lines and numbers. Right. So what our brain does when it sees this is it's looking at different symbols. So the activity that we work on when we're working on clocks, we often call it clocks, um, but it's symbol relations. It's the relationship between different symbols. Right. So you have um, you have your hour hand, your minute hand, your second hand, all the numbers that are going around. Your brain's reading all of those things individually and making split second decisions of what this is. Right, like I can read this as 10.09 and 32 seconds, right on its way to a 33rd second. But often where we start is like, oh, it's 10 after um, 10, or let me see, it could just be it's still nine. No, like it, it takes time to learn how to read these. And, you know, there, there's different things that are similar in life and, and what we're able to see. Um, and I, I kind of talked about how Barbara used these. But what's really firing up 
in the book in the brain is sorry for those squirmy people. Um, this is a corpus callosum right in here. So if you took your brain out of your head, it would be attached by this connective fibery band in the middle of our head, right? And when we want to read information, the right side of the brain might read more of the circles, lines, circles and lines and images, whereas the left side would read more of the numbers and making sense. So what's happening is one side of the brain is communicating quickly with the other side, and that's our processing speed. If that's slow in real life, we could be watching things and just not be able to pick them up because the connection isn't strong enough to be able to take all of those symbols and make sense of them like that. So what reading clock is and what Barbara started doing with her flashcards of, okay, I'm, I'm looking at these times, I'm not really sure, it's 2.15, 3.25, to eventually 2.15, 3.25, 12.37, 7, right? Going through them a lot quickly, quicker this part of the brain was starting to strengthen quite a bit. And what that translated into was the ability to make sense of the world at a faster pace. So when Avonlea is talking about, when Amy's talking about Avonlea picking up on jokes faster, making quicker connections, that could be at play where both sides of the brain are working. And what I was talking about before, the balance is so important. You're getting that balance within the brain where it's able to work together seamlessly to make sense of the world as fast as you need it to. And this is a pretty good example that I like to use is learning to drive. I, I talked about the bike before, but driving is much more complex. You have a steering wheel, you have a gas, brake, mirrors, parents screaming beside you, right? When you're first getting into the car, it's very intimidating. You have other people on the road, you can't hit them. You can't hit other, other cars. You're not sure how much to push down. There's a lot of little symbols that are happening that are related to each other to make sure you're driving safe, right? But over time, it gets easier and easier before suddenly you're listening to the radio, you're driving safely and um, you're able to obey all the rules. And you're not putting cognitive thought to it. Whereas on this side, you're freaking out, right? You can't read things that quickly. So by the time you're just like a clock, you're adding more hands, you're getting more complex before you know it, things in life are easier. Or you're able to do other things while you're doing it. There's a big myth with multitasking and that it's effective. You should really just be focusing on your driving, but the brain's in an environment now where you're actually able to function without needing to put the extra thought. And if you're thinking about overthinking about everything in life while you're watching someone have a conversation or anything that's happening in front of you as, as you go through every day, if you're able to pick up what's happening quicker, you're not putting extra thought to those things. So this is a little bit of what uh, the program would look like. So we would get uh, a new student in and we would, we would register them. Register them. Um, they would be given a programming assessment, like we said. So we'd be looking at the start of the year. Okay, they might be severe in this area. What we'd be looking at is jumping a couple boxes uh, per year to get up to what would be an average rating, right? Or something close to the average rating. Honestly, a lot of these things, um, any rating, any test you do anywhere doesn't really matter. Quality of life matters. Improving, seeing the improvements, seeing things get easier is, is what you're really you know, the outcome goal is. However, it's nice to see jumps. It's nice to see that proven. So we do this assessment at the start and at the end of every uh, school year or program. We use Teams uh, currently for our platform. So everyone has, um, you know, the ability to work with their class through video, through chats, uh, everything kind of goes through. So you'd just be working with your teacher, um, through this platform to ensure, this is kind of like the, the classroom that you're in, the physical room. Um, it's just, you are the virtual version of yourself and we um, try to make it as fun as possible while we're in there. You get assigned to your cognitive program, like we were just talking with clocks. Um, you know, you're, you're reading uh, a variety of clocks or you're doing different activities where you're working on other brain regions. Uh, it really depends on your profile, what you get registered for, so the assessment, speaks to the area that's in most demand that would help you out the most. What the teachers are holding is a tablet that has all of the statistics. So everything coming through, we are watching constantly. I'm, I'm lucky to be in a position where, you know, half of my job is working with 
a class and half of my job is um, as co-director of instruction with Sarah Cohen, who's joined us here as well. And, you know, together we're able to, to start to really look at what the best practices are for working online. Um, how is this going to impact differently than being in, in schools? And what we're really noticing is, you know, with the ability to control their own environment, we're seeing very good outcomes. And the being uh, in the, you know, in teams, we're able to really be together while you're doing the program, uh, but we're also seeing the stats come through. And we can see them in different ways. So what we're looking at is over time, um, and these are available at the, the touch of a finger, as you can see uh, on the top of the graph there. And we can see the, and track every set of anything that's gone through uh, that's been done by the student. And the best way to, to be able to, you know, set with, work with goals is to track what's happening in the, in the class and track what's happening at home. And that gives us a, a little bit more insight on how we work with the student, you know, should I be uh, setting up a time to meet because this level isn't quite landing. This gives us that knowledge so we don't have to rely on the students needing to ask for help. We can catch it before anything becomes a problem. And we also see this online in much more detail. Um, we like statistics. They, they tell a story about, you know, how, how you're doing. Um, you know, like I said, the most important thing is you're feeling better, you're doing better, you're able to do more cognitively, uh, but the stats kind of help us get to that. And a lot of people, you know, we work with motivation and, and the outcomes are the most important thing. So there's different charts that uh, some families work with. This is a student that were, was working with us in the summer and really counting down her days and, and earning things. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's nice to, to have those tangible things that you can, the tangible rewards that you can work with. I know as, I was teaching my son to snowboard this weekend. Again, uh, we've been off for, for a year and, he didn't really take it seriously until he was getting five dollars. We're at the candy store to go from the very top, and to see the confidence kind of change. Then you know every kid's different. Not everyone needs you know food or candy or money. Everyone's very different, and we want to make sure everyone's motivated. So we work with the families to to ensure that we're we're getting the most out of it. Engagement's everything. You know if you're pushing, if you have the grit and determination to to work towards any type of goal that's gonna help you engage in the program, that's gonna stimulate the brain region to have the best outcome. And again, like I was saying, there, there's decades of research in this program. There's 20 independent studies. Um, I was discussing before my, my involvement in the, the brain injury research, and I'm, I'm proud to, that that was the, the first one published. Um, and, and we learned so much out of that process. And I, I remember working with Barbara and getting the chance to really um, spend a lot of time and pick her brain through that process and you know she's very dedicated to research and figuring out how to, to keep progressing this program and what we're seeing in in a lot of the studies is improvements in in the brain I won't go get too much into exactly what's happening in all of these slides but what they're seeing is generalized improvements um, throughout the brain that are making learning easier and really like it's it's kind of sad the way that science and um, education aren't really fields that are connected. You think they would be. There's not many programs out there where they are, where the what, the, how the brain learns, um, you know, isn't isn't connected with how we teach, right? So, you know, as these fields start to come together a bit more, we're learning a lot more, and this is kind of one of the first steps. Uh, so it's interesting to see, you know, how we're getting processing speed up by doing something that's not really teaching content. Right? We're targeting neuroplasticity within the brain to help it improve. And we're seeing the outcomes come out that are you know, improving quality of life and making learning easier for students and making life easier for, for everyone. Uh, so I'll, I'll jump to the end here quickly. So this is what uh, some of the researchers are saying. Uh, so there seems to be a story here about cognitive efficiency, which includes working memory and attention and learning and the capacity to learn new things. These are really important cognitive skills for success at school and in life in general. We're strengthening functioning, cognitive functioning, presumed to underlie academic achievement deficits, improves reading, mathematics, and writing by targeting the cause rather than the symptoms. There is neuroplasticity as a function of Aerosmith training, which generally improves performance, 
so do precise Aerosmith cognitive exercises activate and functionally change particular areas or networks of the brain? The answer is yes. So what we're seeing is science is, is showing that the brain is improving um, and you know what the, the outcomes are from the, the families are that things are getting easier. We're noticing a big difference. Um, as long as you're able to engage, you're gonna get something out of, out of a program like this. Um, so I'd love to, to take questions um, or any, any comments through this process. Sarah's here as well to answer um, questions if you guys are interested. I'll just, um, I'll share briefly, you know, I'm, I work with Josh, obviously, and uh, I've been working with Aerosmith for a great number of years now, I'd say 17 years and getting into the 20 something years of being in special education, we don't need to be precise with the number at that stage of the game. Um, and last year I brought both of my boys into the program and they weren't struggling majorly at school, but there was um, definitely challenges. I mean, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, but having access to this program, um, you know, I just really felt like, why wouldn't I do this with my own children? And I just want to echo what Amy and Avonlea were saying. I was so moved and actually what Elaine was saying too, that, um, you know, when you see these sorts of changes happening for people that you love and well, I mean, you can only imagine with what Elaine is saying in yourself, like it just, um, it changes, it changes the quality of life, you know, and it's not just for the child, but it's for the whole family because there starts to be this easing anxiety, an ease of the anxiety as a parent where, um, Amy, you said that so beautifully, where you do worry about your children's survival. And, you know, in some ways, maybe we're being a little bit dramatic, but in some ways we're not, like we're talking about careers and income potential and all these sorts of things. And when you really see that start to shift and um, and start to see their own anxiety around school and learning come down and wash away, um, uh, there's just, there's nothing like it. Like there's just, there's just no other experience like it. So it's, um, it's such a pleasure to be able to be a part of it. And, you know, Josh and I work supporting the teachers that are helping our students. And so we get to see you know, as Josh, Josh was showing you this sort of like back end of the data a little bit more um, and but to go into the classrooms and, you know, really see it come to life and, and to hear those stories of change and life impacts, it still gives me goosebumps, you know, 17 years later. And so, uh, Avonlea, I'm so glad you mentioned that part, of, or maybe it was Amy, but mentioned the part about laughing at jokes more when I first started teaching, it was one of my high school students. After a few months in the program, I was like, so what are you noticing? You know, <laughs> what, are, what are the changes going on for you? And she said, oh, I'm, I'm understanding jokes. And that just blew my mind. I'll never forget that moment. I didn't, you know, here I had been in special education all the years prior to that and trained in Orton Gillingham and helping children learn how to read and work with the writing and I didn't realize how profoundly so many of my students were challenged in interactions and in the world. And I mean, I want all of our students to improve in their reading and their, their clarity of thought and critical thinking and processing speed and with math. Like, yes, yes to all of those. But secretly, my greatest joy always comes from when people start finding life funnier. I think that's like, you know, that in a way that's sort of the cherry on top for me because what is life without joy and humor and um you know how lucky are we that that is gets to be part of actually what the program does which is helping people to have more optimism about the world to have more joy in their social interactions to feel safer in themselves when they're talking with people and in their friendships because they understand what's going on and and, and to see these multiple points of view and why a punchline is funny and, and to understand another person's perspective. I mean, yes to all the academic work, but that's really what I think is so unique and special about this program. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I just wanted to add that in there, but thank you so much, Elaine and Avonlea and Amy for sharing your experiences and stories tonight. That's just, it's beautiful, thank you. All right, guys, um, that's all for tonight. Well, we're happy to stick around if you guys would like, like to stay and ask any questions. Um, 
but we're always around. Uh, you know how to how to reach us. Uh, thank you so much for coming and, and sharing your experiences. It, it, it means a lot to us, but it, it could mean a lot to to someone else who watches it and you know makes that decision to to do this this type of work, which is impacting so many lives. All right. Okay, guys, take care.